Ana, it's wonderful to have you here. And uh, you're the director of Hispanic Engagement yes. for Turning Point USA. Tell me a little bit about how you got to this place. So I, start, so I was in the military. Um, I had actually gone into medical school and I separated because I had my acceptance letter. And about 24 hours prior to me leaving, I got a text message from Charlie saying, hey, I'd like to talk to you. We'd like to be offer you this position. Now, to kind of segue how I came across Turning Point, um, that was a little bit of an interesting story. I was working with an organization called Veterans for Child Rescue, and this was right prior to CNN essentially going down to the border and putting literally Hispanic women and children on their TVs because they believed that this was an immigration crisis. We saw a lot of people that were posting photos, you know, false photos from even Mosul, uh, saying that these were children in these facilities and these terribly horrific things were happening with family separation. What was interesting is the organization that I was working with, Veterans for Child Rescue, actually worked works to combat uh, human sex trafficking of children at the U.S.-Mexico wow, border. Wow, incredibly important work. It, I mean, when you see what happens and you talk to these people and you see the numbers, um, it's horrific. So on my own, not only was I working with this organization and using my social media to really shed light on it, but I started doing my own digging. So I read the 2018 Human Trafficking Report. I found statistics from the ACLU, even UNICEF saying that, you know, there's around 16,000 children that have been victims of human sex trafficking. So even at this event at CPAC, if there were 5,000 people in attendance, it's times three in that room of children that have been... Over what time period is that? I, the article doesn't tip, like actually state the facts, but I can say that the State Department says that 18,000 women annually are trafficked across the U.S.-Mexico border, that's, or that's victims of human trafficking. an astounding number. And when you look at that and you try to explain people the perspective of why we need, you know, literally a physical barrier, whatever it might be, to secure the border. I mean, yes, you have the drug aspect that are killing Americans on both sides, but then you have this aspect of human slavery that's taking place. And I think with a lot of people, especially with this ongoing debate right now, they're not even aware of those facts. And so it's really hard to get that information out because what you're seeing is now in the last two years, you've had the entire Democratic Party flip their narrative. They're going from, you know, initially really supporting these border policies and even going along with the same policies that President Trump tried to put in place and now all of a sudden they are trying to care about the Hispanic demographic while actively turning a blind eye to human slavery. And so when you see that and you look at, you know, or, or, or websites like pewhispanic.org mm -hmm. that talk about even two years ago what the whole topic and focus was for the Hispanic community, you can see it's blatant propaganda and really an attempt to turn Hispanics into single issue voters, not only for 2020 but for the future because we are the largest voting minority, specifically Mexican Americans. Absolutely. Listen, let, let's let's jump into this border side. Like you've actually been there. Yes. You've been working with these people directly, some of whom have been actually trafficked. I worked with the organization Veterans okay. for Child Rescue. Right. I actually went down there and I filmed a documentary with Turning Point USA. So that will be up soon, and it's going to be a 12-part mini series, really explaining what we came across. And what was so crazy to see is you go down to certain areas of the border, and yeah, it's open. But then you find evidence of people who have made that journey, and I, I like to consider myself someone pretty physically fit. I made it through the military basic training. Right. But when you see this, and you realize that a lot of these people that are coming over, most of the time they're forced into it. A lot of times they're forced into not only being human trafficked, but they're forced into carrying drugs. And then you talk to the border patrol agents, and you hear stories, and it's not in common, in common for them to come across groups of not only men, but just women who are separated from their children and promised if they bring this across the border, if they come across, they'll, they'll get reunited. their children at the end and they're never, they never relocate them again. And then you realize that, you know, the difference between drugs and a human is that drugs are used once, a human you can resell time and time again. And so it continues to generate profit. And the interesting thing is, um, I know everyone, you know, fake news CNN, but ironically enough, before Trump, they did an article on a woman called Carla Hacito. She came out and said that she was raped 43,000 times over a period of, I think, about four to six years. And, you know... I, I can't even fathom that. I don't even... It, you have to read the article yeah. because when you look at these numbers, and she's now an advocate for women who have been trafficked um, into the United States, and she works with an organization in Mexico City that helps take these women out of these brothels, even on the border because there's a lot of sex tourism. Um, when you see those stories and then you realize that this is actually happening, and as a moral gut check as Americans, we need to really seriously 
think about why it is that we have an entire political party and this agenda that turns a blind eye to human slavery when they're actively, you know, on different outlets saying that not only they care about Hispanics, but they're advocates for the Me Too movement and empowering women. They're not actually doing what they say that they're about. So, and when we talk when we talk about the border crisis and this debate on often we were hearing illegal, illegal immigration, illegal immigration, but there's this huge dimension of the human trafficking and the drugs, and that's even perhaps more the crisis, right? More the issue of the of, of the open border than even the illegal immigration, which we, you know the numbers show is quite sizable, right? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, when you the one thing that bothers me is there is such thing as an illegal that's not from Mexico. They've literally assigned this race to the whole term of illegal, right? Um, but aside from that, then you have the aspect of, you know, look at how much fentanyl they they really caught coming across the U.S.-Mexico border. Was it last year alone? It was enough to kill the entire U.S. population two times over. Then you see what's happening to American families and the fact that, yes, we have an opioid epidemic. You have so many things that are happening, and I can say that, you know, I'm not happy about this, but like I've had family directly affected by drugs. My grandmother died of AIDS from heroin use. I've seen directly the impact that it can have, not only in my family, but in these communities. And coming from that, what you see is that, you know, you have these people that are in politics, and I think that you have people that care, and then people that read it in books, and so they might not have that direct connection of what your everyday American face is. And so it is a problem. You have this huge you know, you have all the factual backing from the State Department, from the Justice Department, from Border Patrol, from law enforcement, but they don't want to listen. So I think it's time that everyone in America says, you know, this is a nonpartisan issue. This is an issue that's affecting people, not only just here in the United States, but on both sides. And if we don't lock this down soon, what's going to happen is you're going to continue to have the mass murder and genocide and whatever's happening in Mexico. And I say that because literally Breitbart did a story on it. Um, where they were showing pictures of decapitated and dismembered bodies near a freeway near the U.S.-Mexico border. That's happening on a regular basis because of these wars happening over trafficking routes into the, the United cartels. States. The cartels, yeah. Yeah, the cartels. Mm -hmm. And people, because it's not happening right in front of them when they go to their Starbucks first thing in the morning, they don't want to think it's an issue, though. But it is. It's absolutely an issue. We need to be more effective in what we're doing with our policies because when we're not, people end up dying. This is a very personal issue for you. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, um, so is your. How are you personally faring through? You lost your grandmother. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm not ashamed to talk about. I think a lot of people, sometimes especially in this arena, they might more or less be embarrassed where they came from. But I feel like that my life story has really enabled me to connect and talk to people and really say like, look, I've like lived through certain things. You know, I, I, I didn't have like a great upbringing, um, but because of that diversity, it really helped me think about things from a different perspective and really talk to people about why we need solutions for certain things and why some proposals don't work and why other ones do. And really, you know, coming from Los Angeles, California, I wasn't essentially raised conservative. So it was really my life experience that led me to come to the conclusion of, of why I do believe what I do now but because of that I'm able to talk to people and really explain to them hey look I don't you know I'm not just like reading this in books I didn't have the easy upbringing like I understand what you're going through and this is why we need the solution and this is you know it's very much in line with you know our our reporting approach to the border which is you know our reporter Charlotte Cuthbertson she's there she's basically going on ride-alongs with the border yeah. patrol she's talking to the sheriffs the realities are, are, are very very difficult and sadly along the lines of exactly what you're talking about thank you so much for sharing your story thank you